Okay, the next chapter is basically bones and bone tissue. So every single time we talk about tissues, we need to talk about cells, right? So there are cells that are very important in the uh, uh, skeletal tissue. When you put together the skeletal tissue, you're going to get bones, right? And obviously, these bones, when you put together all the bones, you're going to get the skeleton. So the skeleton plays a very important role right, in our body. And it has, as you can see here, functions. The main function, one of the functions is support, right? It supports your whole entire body with the vertebral column and your limbs, right? Next one is going to be protection. For example, we have the thoracic cavity. Inside the thoracic cavity, you have your heart. And uh, obviously, the rear thoracic cavity is going to protect your heart. Same thing happens with the skull and the brain. Next one, movement. Bones are attached to muscles and the muscles move. So uh, the um, muscles that are attached to the bones are going to be called skeletal muscles. Next item that we have is the electrolyte balance. Obviously, because the, uh, the skeleton has a lot of calcium and phosphate, and these are ions that can influence the electrolyte balance that you have in your body. Next one is acid base. Obviously, uh, you have... Um, uh, pH and modifications or changes in pH are going to be as a consequence of modifications or changes in the acid-base balance. Uh, the acid-base balance are controlled with buffers and phosphate is a very important buffer that is going to help us control pH. That's why since you have calcium, I mean since you have phosphate in your bones, it will play a role in maintaining the acid-base balance. Blood formation, uh, the inside the bone you have the bone marrow, and in the bone marrow you have the... Uh, so inside the bone, you have the bone marrow, and the bone marrow produces the red blood cells. Therefore, another function is the blood formation. Okay, so we said the bones, the bones tissues are very important to talk about the cells, right? Because obviously the cells are the ones that are going to be responsible for uh, creating the bone. Since the cells create the bone, the bones can have multiple different shapes. For example, based on the shape we can have, as you can see here, flat bones, long bones, short bones, and irregular bones. That's based on the shape. Based on the structure, basically what they are composed of, what they are made of, what's the characteristic that the bone has itself, then we can say that we have basically compact bone, Right here, which is the bone that you have on the outside. And then the other one is going to be a spongy bone, which is the bone that you have on the inside. Right? Like in a chicken bone, the outside is compact, the inside is a spongy. So right here in this figure, you can clearly see that the outside, all this area, the outside is going to be compact. The inside is a spongy. In the case of long bones, there are two very important uh, distinctions. The top of the bone is the epiphysis, the middle of the bone is the diaphysis, and the bottom of the bone, again, is going to be epiphysis. So there are two epiphyses and one diaphysis. So if we look at, the, of, at our arms, for example, and let's assume, well, let's call it with the proper name. This is the femur. And the femur is in your legs. So this is the one that is connected to your body. So this epiphysis is the one that is going to be closer to your body. So therefore, this is going to be closer, I mean, the proximal epiphysis. And this one is going to be far away from your body compared to the other epiphysis. So therefore, this is going to be the uh, distal epiphysis. Okay? So then we continue going down. As you can see here, it says epiphysis and diaphysis that we already talked about it. Okay? And the bones also have different layers. The outside of the bone is called periosteum, okay, right here. And the inside of the bone is called endosteum. At the top, you're going to have an, an epiphyseal plate, which is the area where we are going to grow the bone in length, like when we are little. And we are going to see figures about it in a little bit, okay. Uh, same way that we have the long bones, the femur that I just showed you, we can have flat bones. The flat bones, you can see here, compact, spongy, and at the bottom again, compact. Okay, more or less the same structure as the previous bone. So if this would be a long bone, so obviously this would be the outside 
I mean the outside of the bone, the middle of the bone, and the other side of the bone. But in this case of long bone, this would be round, right? In this case, more like a sandwich, where you have the compact bone on the top, compact bone at the bottom, and the spongy bone in the middle. Okay, another name for that is diplo, as you can see here. So let's keep going. And that's about it for this part. So the next item is histology. Again, we need to talk about the cells. That's why you have in here bone cells. So there are four main cells in your bones. The first one right here is osteogenic cells. Osteogenic cells are stem cells that are going to be capable of giving you other kinds of cells, such as, for example, the osteoblast. The osteoblast is the one that is going to build the bone. Okay, so where the osteoblast comes from? From the osteogenic cells, which are the stem cells. Where do you find the stem cells? In your bones. Where do you have the osteoblast? In your bones. But where do these ones come from? From the osteogenic cells. Okay, then we keep going down. The next one is osteocyte. Osteocyte are osteoblasts that have become trapped in the bone once the osteoblasts build the bone. So, imagine that the osteoblasts builds the bone uh, using concrete. So the osteoblast is going to get trapped inside the concrete. Once the osteoblast get trapped inside the concrete, then it changes its name to osteocyte. Okay, we're going to see that in a little bit. So we keep scrolling down, and the next one that we're going to have is the osteoclast. Is the if the osteoblast builds the bone, then the osteoclast is going to destroy the bone, and we're going to see that there. Are metabolic requirements in which we need to actually remove bone and in that case we're going to use the osteoclast. Not only that, but the osteoclast is going to help us reshape our bones. Next we have the matrix. Remember I told you what happens if the osteoblast uses concrete to build the bone? Well it's not actually concrete or the concrete if you want to use it, you want to use that term, would be the matrix. Okay. The matrix is basically made of calcium. As you know, cal uh, the bones are kind of like uh, yellowish, whitish, because obviously it's made of lots and lots of calcium. But it's not pure calcium, it's actually a salt. A salt because it's calcium phosphate, as you can see here, calcium phosphate, and this is called hydroxyapatite. Uh, 80 to 85% of the bone is calcium phosphate, and approximately 10% is calcium carbonate. Okay, so it's not pure calcium, but rather it's a salt. Uh, I mean, several salts in this case, calcium carbonate, calcium uh, phosphate, and obviously uh, just a few other uh, substances in there, uh, such as, you know, sodium and potassium, but very, 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 very uh, little amount. Okay, so then what is the cell that builds the bone? The osteoblast. What the osteoblast uses in order to build the bone? The matrix. What is matrix? Calcium. Is it pure calcium? No, mainly calcium combined with uh, car phosphate, therefore giving you calcium phosphate or hydroxyapatite. So right here, while well, you see here, they're telling you this is more like a composite, similar to what is using in multiple structures that we humans built, because it's very strong. Well, same thing, the mixture of calcium together with other substances, such as, for example, collagen, makes our bones somewhat flexible as well as very, very, very strong. Okay, so we said that what type of bones can be built? We said compact bone, right? And let's take a look at how the compact bone is, uh, or what is the structure of the compact bone. So we keep scrolling down right here, we have a figure. So in here, you can see that the compact bone is built we, in concentrical structures like this, onion-like structure, you guys see it in here? Okay, and in the middle, you're going to have three very important uh, structures, which are going to be the red, the blue, and the yellow. In this case, it's uh, blood vessels as well as a nerve. The red one is an artery, blue is vein, and the yellow one is the nerve. So. What happens is once there are these three structures in here, the osteoblasts are going to be uh, located around this. That's why it takes this shape like this, kind of like round. Because this blood vessel right here will provide the blood that these cells are going to need. And remember, I said that these are going to be the ones that are going to initiate this and they're going to build this. It's going to be the osteoblasts, but eventually they're going to get trapped inside this structure, which is the matrix, and they're going to become osteocytes. 
a better view of that is this one right here that we have in black and white same thing in the middle you have the area where the nerve the artery and the vein where right obviously because this is a real bone that was cut it's already dead so that's why you don't see these structures anymore but right here is where the red the blue and the yellow artery veins and nerves were and this area is called the central canal around it in all these black dots right here that's where all the osteoblasts and eventually osteocytes used to be and you see it has kind of like this concentric structure right here this is kind of like concentric okay, that's called the lamellae okay but each black dot is in a space that's called the lacunae where the osteocyte was was inside the lacunae the whole entire thing all this you see has a boundary in here you guys see it right there because you can see another one right here going this way so this structure right here is called an osteum in the middle you have the central canal surrounding you have the lamella in the lamella you have little holes these little holes were the lacunae and what was located inside the lacunae was the osteocyte so a whole bunch of osteons as you can see here osteon 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 those are the ones that are going to form the compact bone okay so we keep scrolling down and they are just explaining how they are going to be formed and the amount of blood that the bones are going to get i don't think that's information that you need to know and right here it says it's organizing osteons as, as i mentioned before so the next one is the spongy bone the spongy bone is basically uh, very the formation is very similar but it's going to form like a spikes okay and spikes and thin walls the spikes seen here spines rods spicules right or spikes as i call it and you have thin walls like this one right here they call it thin plates are going to be the trabeculae so all this is going to calcify and it's going to become very hard and that's what's going to be located inside your uh, compact bone and these are these parts right here they're called spongy because in the structure these thin walls and these spikes they're going to form this structure right here but in between you're going to have a whole bunch of holes and that's why the name of these areas are going to be spongy bone they are very strong okay they are very strong but they are being used because they reduce the weight of the bone right by having spaces and also you're going to have lots and lots of that in the areas where the stress in the bones are going to be located you see you can see here that's the areas where most of the stress is going to be located that's why you have lots and lots of it in there okay so then we keep going down and obviously what is this space that we have right here for this space is for us to put the bone marrow the bone marrow is very important because it has a one very important function which is the formation of blood there are two kinds of bone marrow obviously it's going to be called red bone marrow because that's the area where the red blood cells are going to be created they produce blood and you also have obviously some yellow bone marrow right, like in the middle of the of the bone okay and basically in this case the yellow bone marrow is just some fat that we have in there okay so if you scroll down you can see here for example the main areas where you have red bone marrow and the areas where you have lots of uh, yellow bone marrow so red bone marrow and yellow bone marrow in what areas you find that your skeleton so if we keep scrolling down well i guess that's it for this part